In this video, I want us to talk about what it would take to start a hardware business. This is a comment that I've received in a previous video and I wanted to tackle it in this particular video. If you want to start a hardware business, then watch this video to the very end and I'll explain to you all the things that you need to consider as well as some of the tips that you should put in place in order to make sure that your business succeeds. Let's get those credits rolling. One of the very first things that you need to do before we even get to the amount of money that's required is to know your market. The first thing that you will need to do is to check if there is a market for this particular business. This is a place where you can see constructions going on. There's a lot of land sale that is going on. And if you can be able to see similar businesses in the area in about 10 kilometer radius, then that tells you that this is a business that you can get into. The hardware business relies on you being able, number one, to provide quality items to your customers at very competitive prices. I know people who will go to a different place because of a difference of 10 shillings on the product. And this is something that you need to be acutely aware of because there will always be price wars in the hardware business. It's important for you to be able to find out how many competitors are in that particular market and their relative size, financial muscle. This is really easy to be able to know because you can actually just pop in and pretend you're a customer and buy one or two things or even send people to those places to be able to buy a few things and you can be able to see how big your competitors are. The next thing that you need to consider is how much money you're willing to put into this particular business. The hardware business as a general rule, is a very cash intensive business. But not to worry, there are a few tips that I'll share with you on how you can be able to grow this business a bit faster so that you can be able to scale even more. Look for a place where you will be using as little as possible in terms of rent payable. This means that you can even get a plot where you put up a temporary structure and that is how you can get into the hardware business. But when you're getting into the hardware business, you can choose to focus on different aspects of construction. You can decide that cement is what you want to focus on, which will require you to actually go to either distributors or the companies themselves that sell cement and be the cement supplier in a particular area. Or you can choose that your hardware shop will be a supplier to other hardware shops. So the clients that you're mostly getting would have been your potential competitors, but because of your financial muscle, you are actually supplying to them. The next thing that you'll need to look at in terms of getting into a hardware business is convenience. This is something that is top of mind of every single builder or developer. Are you able to actually take these items to where the construction is happening? This does not require you to invest a lot into a lorry, although that would have been good, but you can be able to get those tuk-tuks where you can be able to carry like 20 or 30 bags of cement. You can start there as you continue to build, or you can be able to talk with some Someone who has a lorry, if it's not in use, you make use of it and you pay them for their time or for their staff who are actually helping you with this work. If you can be able, go to a place where the owner is or the foreman is, create a relationship with them so that you can be able to supply them as they are doing their construction. Of course, this business works really well with referrals. So if you do a good job, you will always get additional business. Do not be afraid of going out and looking for customers every single day and leaving your cards 
with people who may be your potential customers. This is how to grow this hardware business. The next thing that you need to think about is look at the products that are fast selling. This can be steel bars and rods. This can be nails, door hinges, white cement, plumbing material. All these are things that move really fast and the margins on them can be really small, but because of their quantity, you can actually make really good money here. If you're planning to start this business with about 50,000 bob, then this is the route that I'd advise you take. Buy this item so that you can be able to supply them to bigger hardware hardwares who may not have them or directly to the customers who may need them at that particular point. And then with time, anytime that you hear a client asking for a particular thing and you don't have it, just make sure that you get it for them. And then the next time you will actually have it in stock in your shop. Create a relationship as well with other hardware shops that are around so that if a client comes to your place and you don't have that item in stock, you can be able to quickly run to your neighbor, get it from there, sell it to this particular client, make a little amount and then pay back the place where you have bought. This makes sure that this client who's come to you, they know that you have everything that they may need and then you've also helped someone else to sell and for yourself you've created credibility with people created a friendship and there's some small amount that you also remain with as well the next thing that you need to do is think about marketing this is going to be the biggest differentiator for you if you are going to start the hardware business marketing your business is your first priority not even the stock not even opening up but marketing because there's no point of opening this particular business if you'll not have people choosing to come to your business and not to your competitors so marketing your business is really important one of the ways that you can actually do this is to go to where people are constructing talk with owners talk with foremen, talk with people who are specialists in this area, from plumbers to painters, all these people, you need to actually be talking to them so that they can give you business in future, even if they are not giving you business right now. The next thing that you can actually do is look at how you can be able to advertise your business on social media. I've seen people advertise their business on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, all this, even on WhatsApp. These are ways that you get many more people thinking about your business, even if they are not yet ready to be your customers. You want to be top of mind at the time when people will be doing construction. And if you can be able to deliver to people, especially for free, then this is a good way of marketing your business. The next thing that you need to look at is managing that business. As you're starting out, you may not yet have the money to pay employees. So this is a business that will require you to be there so that you can be able to monitor all these things at a go. One thing that you need to do is have very good records so that you can be able to see what is fast moving, what is giving you a high margin. If you need something that is going down in stock levels, then you need to be able to monitor this. A good software that you can be able to use here is called Tally. I've talked about it in a previous video. I'll place that video in the description as well as in the card above so that you can go and see how Tally can help you to manage your business. Once you start having employees, it's important for you to train them how to deal with customers because this can be one of the biggest headaches that you get in a hardware business. Customer service is really important. So teach your employees how you want them to treat the customers and how to be able to speak and bargain with customers. This is one of the important things that are in this business. Many of the clients who come to a hardware shop will ask for a discount no question. But if you have empowered your employees that they know that they can be able to give particular discounts to clients when they ask for them, then you have actually empowered them enough so that they don't have to get in touch with you every single time that a customer has come in and needs a discount. You want them to actually be able to make these decisions 
on the spot and be able to keep your customers happy. Another thing that you'll need to do in order for this business to work well in terms of managing the business is to have a business till number. Now you can go the MPSA route or you can have a bank where you can you actually have the money move from the MPSA till straight into your bank account. Of course, this is the option that I'd advise for you if you have a hardware shop because you actually want to create a relationship with your bank so that later, if you may need financing from your bank, you can actually be able to go there. And a hardware shop advantage is that as money keeps on coming in every single day, you are actually building a relationship with the bank and they can see how active you are and you will build your business as well. The next thing that you'll need to think about is making sure that your business is legal. I've done videos on how you can be able to register your business through eCitizen. That will show up on the card above. There's another video that I have done on how to get a permit. I'll share it in the description below. These are things that you will need to do if you want to get into this business. You don't want the county council or or the government to come in and close your business because you don't have relevant certificates. And as you're investing in this particular business, please make sure that you also invest in security because these items, because of their nature and how fast it is to be able to sell them, you will need to play security. This can be CCTV, but also guards as well, especially during the night. In this particular business, expect about 10% from your cost as profit. This is how this business usually operates and you can be able to turn around your stock and grow the business. One important thing is to make sure that you have at least enough to be able to even give credit at times to your very dedicated clients but this business, because of its nature, is a highly cash business. That is one of its biggest advantages. You can actually make really good money every single day if you start this business. And if you want to start a business with 50,000 Kenya shillings, here are some business ideas for you to think about and look at how you can start the business as well. I'll see you in the next one.